Chat. Look at this insanity. Look at this absolute fucking insanity. That's 50 minutes. This is an hour. An hour of her being upsetty at me. An hour of it. Oh my god. Oh. I didn't want to be here for until 2 a.m. I don't know. Ugh, I feel like we should start a stream with this video. I didn't realize it was 50 minutes. Mm. 50 minutes. She also linked this video. Uh, so she goes and says, uh, uh, to learn more about unalienable rights, go to this guy. Let's read. I'm only going to play 26 seconds of this. This is how far I got. Here's the first 26 seconds of the unalienable rights thing where she disagreed. When I said, when I said, hey, uh, you, you're, you're saying you get rights from God. That's stupid. She said, no, uh, watch this video. Here we go. 26 seconds. Hello, I'm Paul Skousen, and this is the Healing of America Project. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. But there's another kind of right that's more important that I'd like to talk about, and that's our unalienable rights. Those are rights granted us by the Creator. We have them when we're born. Okay, so that's where she gets her ideas of inalienable rights. I'm going to play this at 1.25 speed. I don't know. We'll see how far we get into this. I might skip around. 50 minutes of this being boring is just not is not going to be that fun for me. So let's see what happens cuz I'm not I'm not trying to stay here till 2 and a half uh, till 2 in the morning. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. We're going to watch some Mimsy Moon. Uh, she's mad at me for saying she's an idiot and she's an idiot. Uh, by the way, um, at any point, uh, if, if Mimsy, if Mimsy's like, you're being mean, Jake, no, you're being mean, um, with her puppets or whatever, like, if she wants to actually talk about this, like, any of the things that she believes, I will 100%, uh, have her on at any point, um, yeah, any, any point I would have Mimsy Moon on to talk about how, how absolutely abhorrent her fucking videos are uh rights given us to by the cultivator rights we've had since we were corn true i don't know if you've ever heard of the channel melody sheep but their life beyond serious time that's the universe videos uh i have not but i appreciate that for no reason mathematician uh you're mean jake can i stay at your place exactly so here's mimsy moon being uh, upsetty spaghetti that i'm a meanie i'm a big meanie face uh let's see Ugh. Okay. That's creepy. Okay. It's a beautiful day at Snort Queen's Hollow. You can learn a little something. Would you like to follow? Um. We're following you right, but you might want to go left. Let's take a little trip and it could wait. What rhymes with left? And la da 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 This is stupid. Cut! Hey there, it's me. Again, if you've never seen one of these, it's a fucking fever dream. It just it's 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 all bad. It's never gonna be good. This is always gonna be bad. Um, the audio is gonna be bad. The quality is gonna be bad. Uh, the response portion is gonna be worse. <sighs> Piper, I am your host. Welcome to Adventures in Snorling's Hollow. I'm here to teach you liberal values. Mendy couldn't make it today because she's. I'm not a liberal. I'm not a liberal. Why is my name attached to this video? I'm not a liberal. You don't know what I believe. Too sad. Trump is such a loser. Piper, what are you doing? 
Oh, uh, there you are. Of course I'm here. Have you started recording the show already? Did you forget about our deal? You said if Biden would, you'd let me host the show. Well, here we are. Oh yeah, no, I remember. But isn't this a little premature? I mean, there's pending investigations. Oh my God! No, there isn't! <laughs> All right. All right. Now, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We, got to, we have to think here. We have to think here. Chat. Chat. I need help. I need help. Is 290 more or less than 232? Because that's how we decide who wins. Now, I don't know the answer to this. I've never taken calculus. Pretty sure it's more? I'm not a math queer. God damn it. <laughs> There is no doubt in the world Joe Biden will be the next president of the United States. You absolute fucking maroon. All right. Uh, this is what it sounds like when the brain worms are dead. Oh, fuck. But lawsuits from Trump. No. No. When did, when did this come out? This came out yesterday. 14 hours ago. All right. 300 people watched it. 462 people are watching me watch this. And a recount's going on. It's not official yet. Aw, you poor thing. You're still in the denial phase. Okay. Well, I'm nothing if not a person of my word, so the show is yours. Host away. Are you just gonna sit there? Well, don't you want to co-host? Oh, yeah, sure. That makes sense. You can stay. So, anyway, friends, I just wanted to say... Woohoo! We won! In your face, Trumpsters! Love Trump's hate! Racism has been defeated! The people have spoken! Hey. I just... Can you... Hey, will one of you... Will one of you bomb me? Hey, are any of you Barack Obama? Is Barack Obama here? Does he still have, like... Access to a drone? If any of you are Barack Obama, will you drop a bomb on me right now? Thank you. Appreciate you. Hey, I take offense to that. I don't agree with your premise that Trump supporters are racist. You're, the, you're, you're racists. Um, if you don't think you're racist, uh, uh, you might not be, but here's here's what you are. Takes off mass. Surprise, fucker. I was Barack Obama this whole time. So much cringe. Uh, so what you are, um, uh, Mimsy, is if you are not a racist... Uh, which maybe you're not. That's fine. Um, I, I prefer you not to be a racist. Uh, I think that's a, a good thing not to be, obviously. Uh, what you are is complicit in the racist acts of the people that you support. Um, so... You know what I'm saying? Like, and you're like, ah, that's guilt by association. It's not really guilt by association. It's, it's guilt by complicity. You're complicit in it. Like, I mean... This, it's like it's like Rico. Are you familiar with Rico cases? If you can, uh, if you can, um, in a criminal enterprise like the mob or something, uh, they did this in in the Dark Knight. Uh, where are the other drugs going? Um, if if they pool their resources together or something, and one person uh, can go down for a crime, uh, you can Rico the entire thing, and, and everybody can go down for the same crime. Same crime. It's very similar to this. Um, in, in which case, you voted for knowingly. Uh, a guy who, I mean, like, let's be real, definitely made racists feel more comfortable. And if you disagree with that, ask yourself why racists and racist groups, Proud Boys, KKK, other white nationalist groups, uh, Boogaloo Boys, like, 
Like, why are they very big fans of Trump? And why were the Proud Boys super excited when 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 Donald Trump said stuff like "stand by" and "stand down"? Like, 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 why, why does America's First Nick Fuentes, why, uh, who who you know regularly talk about the Jewish question, um, regularly deny the Holocaust, and regularly uh, talk about how how black people are lesser individuals? Um, why why are these people emboldened by a Trump presidency? Why do they like him? And why do they say? Why do they literally say? That that he is a good president insofar as uh, it's concerned to white nationalist ideals. Why would a white nationalist agree with someone who wasn't uh, emboldening their racism? It doesn't really make sense. So um, when you say I'm not a racist and I voted for Donald Trump, really, it's like it's like so you don't say the N word with a hard R or what? Like that's your bar. What's your bar for racism? When you see someone do something racist, do you call it out? It's very interesting that you still decided to, instead uh, of, of not voting for him, decided to vote for him anyway. Because, uh, again, he does racist things all the time. Um, if you can't identify what's racist about it, uh, then you should have a, have, a, have a conversation with me. Your side's been trying to convince everyone that this is a racist country for the past four years. Yet Trump made gains with ethnic minorities compared to 2016. So he made gains with ethnic minorities, so therefore not racist. Except, of course, the black vote was the deciding factor in Michigan and Georgia. Like, what? The black, black people voted against him because he, they, they feel as though it is, is a racist administration. They literally advocate for the opposite of Black Lives Matter. Uh, what? I mean, I mean, when, when black people in large... As a, as a group of people say, hey, we are experiencing X. And you go, nuh-uh. How do you not feel like that's racist? Like when they say, hey, at the hands of police officers, we have an overwhelming negative experience. Your response to that is, nuh-uh. Donald Trump got black people to vote for him a little? What? It, it, it genuinely, it genuinely doesn't make sense how you, how you think that is a reasonable, like like progression of thought. Know your role, co-host. All right, but put your racism narrative aside for a moment and tell me some other reasons you're happy that you think Biden is our new president. Biden is the new president. No one thinks it. It just is. It's a fact. You think you got me, don't you? Well, I've got plenty of other reasons. I have reasons. Do you want to know the reasons? I know Mimsy Moon is going to watch this eventually, um, even though she thinks I'm a big meanie face. Um, I mean, <laughs> uh, didn't you sing a song about play stupid games, win stupid prizes? Um, it was very bad, but I do respect the fact that you put that out. That's fine. Um, mm, mm, quenching. So um, things I, I appreciate about the Joe Biden presidency. Um, <clears throat> I think number one for everybody is that um, seems competent. <laughs> like, like uh, 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 is a human being that, that, that can have a conversation isn't a narcissist. Like, like Donald Trump is, is definitely a abjectly a fucking narcissist, right? And is, is totally incapable of doing his job. He never filled cabinet positions correctly. He never, he, I mean, he really didn't do anything well while he was in office. Um, he did most of it. Uh, really haphazardly and chaotically. There wasn't a lot of structure involved. There was no professionalism. And it will, all, all of it was about making him money in the long run. And if you don't believe that, I'd strongly suggest you look into his property values, um, his family's. Like, look how much money Ivanka made um, specifically by having a spa um, um, in Trump uh, on a Trump property. So I, I, she made $3.4 million just this last year. Um even though she's part of the administration, which is wild. Um, of course, you have no problem with with the, the nepotism involved with Donald Trump's children being involved in the White House. Like, that's fucking weird. Um, other things that I like about Joe Biden. Um, ending cash bail. That's a good thing. I don't know anyone that would want cash bail to be a thing. And if you argue on behalf of cash bail, I would love to hear your argument. Mimsy Moon, what's your argument in favor of cash bail? If not, then you agree with Joe Biden. Are you for or against private prisons? Do you think that there is an ethical reason to have a profit motivation 
to uh, arrest uh, citizens of the United States. If you are in agreement with me, then you agree with Joe Biden. If you disagree, then you have to defend the practice of private prisons. Um, he's for the federal legalization and decriminalization of marijuana, which, again, if you're for freedom, you should be for that. If you're not for that, I'm, I'm very interested in what the answer would be here. Um, he is for um, expunging the records and, uh, and, and, and pardoning um, nonviolent drug offenders, which, of course, as a former drug user yourself, I think maybe you should have some empathy there. Um, if not, that'd be very interesting. Um, uh, public health care, obviously. Um, you could disagree here, but it would just be because you're ignorant of how like economies work, um, which is fine, Like uh, especially in, in, in lieu of COVID. I think we can obviously see that our private health care system can't fucking handle this kind of thing. It just can't handle it um, because people avoid going uh, to the hospital. You're going to see incredible medical debt, by the way. Medical debt next year, um, 2021, going to come due, and you're going to see a very, a very big, uh, you're going to be probably very happy that the Biden administration is is on the job instead of the Trump administration. Uh, we're gonna see we're gonna see yet again another another series of debt. Um, school school uh, um, loan debt, a fifty thousand dollars stimulus to each and every individual with student loan debt still pending. I mean, I don't. As a capitalist, you're a capitalist. I don't understand how you don't like the idea of consumers having more money in the marketplace. Um, it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Um, if you are against it. I have to imagine it's out of out of ignorance. I, I don't know which. I, I genuinely don't know what your policy disagreement would be on on getting rid of uh, of uh, student debt, except for the really really flaccid bad argument that other people have already paid debt. It's like saying if we got a cancer a cure for cancer that like it's unfair to the people that died of cancer last week because we we got it this week. Like not really. That's just kind of how it works. Good things happen sometimes. Sometimes good things don't happen. As a capitalist, you should understand that, oh, them's the breaks. It wasn't part of the market at the time. You lose. Like, I, I, I just, I guess I don't understand how, how your brain doesn't operate uh, on, on this kind of level. Um, I don't know. There's, there's a, a bunch of other stuff. Infrastructure uh, spending is going to create a lot of jobs that are not underemployed. Um, it's going to make everybody's life a lot better. Um, we're going to have a, a situation where... Um, uh, people are, are free to live how they want. Uh, you're not going to have legislation that targets trans people. You're not going to have legislation that targets uh, homosexual people or bisexual people like you say yourself uh, are. So, I mean, like, you should be on board with... Like, again, the Trump administration actively had anti-homosexual rhetoric within it, and he just voted for someone who doesn't think that if you were to marry a woman... Like, if you were to fall in love and marry a woman... Uh, uh, Amy Coney Barrett does not agree with that institution. She doesn't think that your love would be valid there. Mimsy, and, and this is wild to me that you would support someone that would literally think that your emotional well-being isn't something that you can understand for yourself, and it's something that Amy Coney Barrett gets to legislate and choose on your behalf, rather than you having the freedom to love whoever you want. It's absolutely strange to me that you consider yourself a bisexual person and an ally to LGBTQ people when you would ad ad openly advocate for people. Again, Mike Pence, he thinks that shock conversion therapy is good. They're anti-trans. They literally pass an anti-trans bill. These are these are a bunch of things that I think are very good about the Biden administration that, that you would tend to agree with if you had a single brain set like like you're actually not engaging with the content and you're only going like red v blue like are you actually privy to any of the policies i would love to know what your top five favorite policies are from donald trump because i just gave you about what six or seven from from biden just give me your top five from donald trump in your response to this or when you come on here and have a discussion with me of which you are it's it's totally available uh uh tuesday Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern is when I go live, roughly. Um, sometimes a little bit earlier, sometimes a little bit later. And I'll be here. Go ahead and feel free to go to Actual Jake, twitch.tv slash Actual Jake. Give us a follow. And if you just pop into chat, we'll recognize you. You can jump in the Discord with me. We'll have a conversation. It'll be totally fine. You can even stream it on your end if you want to make some money while you do it. That's absolutely fine. Um, but you know what? I have, I, I, I have a suspicion that you're not equipped for a discussion like that. Um, nor are you willing to have a discussion like that. So, I, I guess we'll see. Good. Let's hear him. Well, he's going to build back better and create lots of new jobs and save our planet with a new green energy economy. 
I, I really do want to hear what you have to say against this. Let's He's going to cut the tax breaks to the wealthiest 1% so we can have the money to help more poor people. Okay. He's going to help more immigrants to come to this country instead of being so selfish. Two rockets. He's going to protect us all from the rotas by listening to the science. He'll bring back dignity to the office and mend our broken relationships with our overseas allies. So, mockingly, through the puppet... She just said, listen to the science to defeat the Ronas. What? Wait, what do you, wait. I, I genuinely want to know what you think. Who, of all the, of all the people to listen to in regards to coronavirus and how to deal with it, do you think we should, A, listen to experts that devote their time and education to understanding good. disease, the control of it, and the treatment of it, or Facebook memes? Or instead of that false dichotomy, literally anybody else besides, let me give you a good faith, okay, because I was making fun of you. Who should we listen to? The experts that devote their time, education, uh, 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 <laughs> to, to understanding disease, the control of it, and the treatment of it, or literally anyone else? Who do you think we should listen to in regards to that when it comes to coronavirus? Seriously. Like, what's the alternative? Absolutely wild to me. Uh, Crimson Cowboy, thanks for following. Did I say that already? Either way. He's a champion for public schools. And we now have the first woman of color vice president who will bring racial equality to help black people. Okay, that's not why Kamala Harris being the vice president is interesting. Um, it's not because racial equality is going to be brought to black people. No, no, no. It's about normalization and just seeing a person of color in a position that, um, um, like, a, a, a woman of color has never been in the office of the vice president. That's never happened. A woman of color has never been there. Um, it's nice for people to see. Um, uh, normalization and representation are very big and important things. I'm not a big fan of Kamala Harris, but that said, I do think that it's incredibly important for people that are that, that identify with an aspect of Kamala Harris's um, demographic makeup, I think it's important for them to see part of them or all of them in an office uh, second highest in the land. Like, that's super important. And for you to disagree with that is, like, really weird. Like, I, it, it'd be amazing. Like, like I, I guess I just don't understand what the dissonance would be there. Like, as a woman, um, you you would understand. Like, it, it, it doesn't it feel a little bit good to be represented? Right? Because as a white man, I, I'm represented all the time. As a white woman, you're represented quite a bit as well. Um, but, like, even so, uh, like, a, a, a woman president, while it doesn't mean they're going to be good at their job, it means that the country has gotten to a point where that's a viable thing. Right? That Like, that, that's, that's, that's culturally significant. That's important, and that's a good thing. And I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why that's... that's <laughs> uh, I, I, I just... I don't, I don't understand the... The, the absolute disdain, I suppose, that you seem to have. And everything can go back to normal and all the protesters can go home now that we don't have a racist sociopath tweeting stupid crap for the White House. Uh, I, again, I, I, think, I think this is another case where a right winger doesn't understand who they're arguing against. Like, like, yet again. <laughs> you know what? I'm impressed. Maybe you do know a little bit more than simply orange man bad. What? You're impressed? Aren't you going to try and debate me? Well, no. I bet our friends thought that that's where this was headed. You know, the whole straw man argument thing. But I respect your opinions. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, it's not about respect. Like, you can respect someone's opinion. A good way to respect the opinion is to be like, here's why I disagree with your opinion. Like what? Like giving it the credence, not just not just hand waving it. Because all you do in that scenario is make yourself look like, like you made a 50 minute video just to just to ride my coattails. Like, are you going to disagree with me? Like, are you gonna are you gonna just say he's mean the whole time? Or are you gonna actually like like pay attention to the policies involved? Are we gonna are we gonna have a discussion at all about any of that? 
Like, again, again, you are 100% like behind this Donald Trump thing when it runs tantamount to like all of the beliefs that I think that you try to say that you believe in. Like, we're, we're going to keep going, but it just doesn't seem like you understand your own politics. Aha! Uh -huh, you got nothing! No, I got something. Lots of ideas for new shows. Whatever! I challenge you to give me a reason that you don't like Biden, other than the fact that he's not your beloved orange leader! Is she going to say in the 90s he did a racism? Oh, I got plenty of reasons. I was just trying to give you your floor because it's your episode after all. Oh, don't worry. I got something planned for you for later. Are you trying to get out of accepting my challenge? Okay. You want reasons? Here you go. Socialism. I think Biden is being used as a Trojan horse in order to get the far left policies pushed through. Why would we use Joe Biden to get far left policies pushed through? Bernie Sanders was right there. What? What's a far left policy you disagree with? Let's keep going. And I think they chose someone old and cognitively declined so they can make Kamala our next president. So they can make Kamala our next president. But. So if the case was to make Kamala the next president. She's not popular with leftists. She's not a leftist. Why do you think that she would push far left? She's like, she's further to the right than Joe Biden is. What do you, what? Like, what? Kamala lost the primary. She wasn't even in the top five. I. Her ramble was Bobby, thanks for following. Ramble. Actually, she might have been actually literally the fifth. Well, I, I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> Why would we just vote for her instead? This doesn't make any sense. A socialist that nobody wanted to vote for. She's not a socialist. Surprised that she shows a blue wig to this guy. Kamala Harris is not a socialist. Name one socialist value that she holds. Like what? What do you even think socialism is, Mimsy? Like what do you think it is? She has no idea what she's talking about, dude. Kamala Harris is a socialist? Incredible. God, she's so stupid. This is exhausting how wrong she is. I mean, she just put out a socialist propaganda video right before the election. What was the socialist propaganda video? I think he's a threat to our national security because of the shady dealings between his family and China and Ukraine. He's a threat to the national security because of China and Ukraine. Donald. Good call, baby bird. Good call. Ex okay. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say anything else. I want you to <laughs> red beard shanks. Thanks so much for prime. I want you to describe how, what, what were the shady dealings specifically? What makes those dealings shady? And then how does that impact foreign policy in a way that you're worried about national security? I'm not going to rebut that. I'm going to ask for you to actually info. You just said words. I'm going to actually ask you, like, how the A to B works there. Shady dealings means the national security threat in the Ukraine and China. How? Explain how that works to me. Go for it. I don't think that's going to work out for you. Let's talk about how Mitch McConnell's wife and her connections to China, because there are actual connections. I mean, I don't. it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. She can't hear it's a VOD. This is a response to me. She's going to watch it. Skuma, thanks for the two months. They got dirt on him, and that makes him compromised. What are you, new to the internet, Butterfiend, you dummy? 
He wants to lock down the country, raise the minimum, minimum wage, and raise our taxes, which could send us into another recession. Okay, so... <laughs> How much money do you make, Mimsy Moon? Let's be real. You are struggling. You are struggling as a as a right wing puppeteer on the on the internet. This got two hundred ninety eight views. You have six hundred twenty six subscribers. You don't qualify for monetization on the channel yet. You have a Patreon that has like three people on it. I don't know where you make any other money, but let's be real. You're not making five hundred thousand dollars a year. Or is it four hundred thousand dollars a year? Okay. If you make four hundred thousand dollars a year, then your taxes go up. Do you make four hundred thousand dollars, Mimsy? Let's be honest. You don't. Your taxes will not go up. In fact, they might. Will they will likely go down. Your your taxes will likely go down. The the the. I mean, you're also going to get access. For free, based on your income, you're going to get access to health care. You no longer have to pay for health care. So you can literally, and again, you're, you're like, well, I want to use my private health care. I mean, not if there's a public option, you won't. Because what your private health care does is it locks you into specific doctors, in specific hospitals, in specific networks for specific issues, right? In a public option, you can't be turned down because you go to the wrong hospital, the wrong doctor, or the wrong. There would, would be no network, and they can't turn you away for any pre-existing conditions. There's no copay on it, or there's a very low copay. Depends on how the model is. If it's like Canadian, it's be like five bucks to walk in. They pay for parking, and they have like a five dollar copay on on like prescriptions. You're talking about a ten dollar hospital visit. That's unheard of in America. Are you fucking kidding me right now? A recession. How is there going to be a recession when each individual in the first 100 days has a $50,000 stimulus built into their fucking budget? Like, what? There's also going to be multiple stimulus packages involved in the COVID relief package that happens moving forward. We're going to, not only that, we're going to be reducing the 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 issues that global warming uh, uh, has caused uh, the nation. So long term, um, advocating for green energy right now. Um, the report just came out like last week. If um, if the Biden administration goes through with their their uh, uh, green new deal plan, the base it's basically the AOC deal. Um, uh, if it, if if it works and they they can pass it and they they follow it. Um, we will avoid, uh, we will come underneath the, the catastrophic bar by uh, 2030, I believe. It was 2030. Um, we will be under the, the catastrophic bar uh, that we, we raise it by another, another centimeter, or, uh, another, another uh, degree Celsius, the uh, ocean waters. Like, that's huge. Like, think about how much money it will cost when, when, when fucking major cities on the coast go underwater. Like, this is a big deal. Like, again, you're saying words, but they don't, like, mean things. You have nothing to back up the idea that, like, oh, he's going to raise your taxes. No, he's not going to raise your taxes. You don't make $400,000, dog. Um... <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the public option in Canada... Oh, there's awful wait times. Um... <clears throat> Hospital beds are full in America. Uh, okay, let's let's keep going. CD Tricks, thanks for following. He'll likely want to bring back that critical race theory BS, which is divisive and racist and damaging to our country. He'll want to bring back critical race theory, which is divisive and racist. Cri critical race theory teaches anti-racism. <laughs> It's all for elective stuff. That's why there's a way, of course. Um, like, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, she doesn't know what critical race theory. Was it outlawed? Uh, actually, um, uh, uh, Donald Trump did, in fact, try to get rid of it from, from curriculums, yeah. Um, education is divisive, I guess. Uh, Mimsy Moon, not interested in education. Uh, ooh, it's critical race theory. Do you even know what? Define critical race theory, Mimsy. Go ahead. Define it. What does critical race theory mean? I, 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 I'm, oh, it's a little sus. Let's just say that. 
uh, uh, at minimum. I don't think you understand what critical race theory is whatsoever. Let's just say that. He wants amnesty for illegals and to open up our borders, which will take entry-level jobs from legal immigrants and poorer Americans who need them. No, that's not how things work. That's not how things work. Entry-level jobs. Immigrants steal en entry-level jobs. Dude, the, the, the myth of Mexicans stealing American jobs is, is so deeply rooted in misinformation and falsities. Like, this has been debunked since George W. Bush was in office. Mexican people, or just, just immigrants in general, don't steal your jobs. Did you know that if you have more people in a country, you have more demand for goods and services, which creates more jobs? Like, what? What? Now, you could talk about automation, which is a problem of capitalism. And then you could talk about how, how it's, it's a bad thing that we rely on labor, undervalued labor, for people to be underemployed to live. Again, you definitely live in poverty. Right? Like, you absolutely are not making money here. How, how do you vote against your better interests? You're voting against the opportunity to go to school and learn something. You're voting against the opportunity to make sure that even at your lowest point, you still have access to food and shelter and, and, and hygiene and water. Like, what? Why? I don't, I don't understand. You're going to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. What? In what way? Giving amnesty to illegal illegal aliens. Um, what this does is, if you give people a, a path to citizenship, they can pay taxes on their income rather than getting paid under the table and not paying taxes on their income. Also, illegal illegal immigrants that don't have a social security card can't get access to any of the any of the the stuff. Like like it doesn't make any sense. You have you have fallen into the trap of. Oh, that sounds right. I haven't looked into it, but it sounds right. Mimsy, it's just wrong. You're just 100% wrong. We could easily... I might get a puppet for these rebuttals. We could easily... If you sat down and had a conversation with me, I could hash this out with you in a, in a, in a couple hours. Do you want to do that? Because it'd be better than watching your really bad videos. And it'd be better than you thinking I'm being mean to you or something. Justify Democrat votes in future elections. I've heard that he's been provably wrong on every foreign policy policy decision that he's ever made. He's been provably wrong on every foreign policy decision he's ever made. Okay, Mimsy. Here it is. Name two. Name two foreign policy decisions that he's made. That are provably wrong? I don't, I don't even know what that means. Foreign policy is not like... Gravity's real. Foreign policy is like... Hey, is we should... Have diplomacy instead of war. Like, what? N name literally any foreign policies that he's done that you think are provably wrong. Like, this doesn't make any sense. Ashley, thanks for following. What what you just said is is literally hearsay. You said I've heard it. It was it was fruitless. It had no substance within it. You just put a wrapper that said bad stuff, and then when you open it up, there's nothing inside. It's a nothing burger. Explain what you mean. You have. Let's be real. Let's be real. Yeah, this is embarrassing, but let's be real. You quite literally have no idea what you're talking about. When it comes to Joe Biden's foreign policy decisions, right? Name any foreign policy decision he's made. Now, obviously, in this in this case, you can have time to go look up foreign policy decisions he's made as a rebuttal of this video. But if I was sitting here right now and I asked you out loud, what's a foreign policy decision Joe Biden's made that you disagree with? You wouldn't know. And I know that you know that you wouldn't know. Isn't that a good sentence? I know that you know that you wouldn't know. But, like, let's be real. Like, like... You should be embarrassed that I just called you out there. Like you should be, you should be intellectually honest with yourself. You know, it's not going to show up in a video. You're not going to put this out there. You're going to be like, oh, you know what, Jake was right. But what you are going to do is know in this moment, you and me right now, while you're watching this, 
You know I'm fucking correct about that. You don't know anything about his foreign policies. You've never known about his foreign policies. You you just you're just chirping like a little bird that heard that you should vote for Donald Trump. You're just repeating it. Like, come on, man. Why be dishonest about it? Well, I've heard he has bad policies. No, what? Explain one of them. You're absolutely crazy. You I you just you have chosen a fight that you should not have chosen. I am so far beyond you right now. This is not fair. I actually feel like I'm bullying you because you're so dumb. He's been in politics for 47 years and he's never got anything done except for a crime bill, which he now regrets. Uh, I mean, he he, he played a pivotal role in, the, in, in, in eight years of an administration that was highly successful in avoiding a, a financial collapse caused by proliferation of war from right-wing war criminals, George W. Bush, Colin Powell and Dick Cheney, Condoleezza Rice notwithstanding. Like, what? I'm not a huge fan of Joe Biden. He's a capitalist. But, like, holy fucking shit, dude. He was literally there the whole time. He was in the room when Osama bin Laden was taken out. Like, like say what you will about certain things. But, god damn, dude. To say that, to say that he never got anything done in 46 What are you talking about? What? I disagree with him about his crime bill, sure. But you don't disagree with him about your crime bill? Donald Trump supports that very same fucking crime bill. What are you talking about? He literally ran on law and order. He wants hard drug laws to stay in place. But meanwhile, Joe Biden has changed his tune on that and is now offering amnesty to those same people that he targeted with that same crime bill. So do you agree with Joe Biden today because he disagrees with himself? That's interesting. Joe Biden was wrong in the 90s with his crime bill. He accepts that. He doesn't he says he regrets it out loud, and now he is running on the opposite of that crime bill, giving amnesty to nonviolent drug offenders and 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 uh, you know, decriminalizing and legalizing marijuana, stopping for profit prisons, ending cash bail, all of these which are assault on poor black Americans and other minorities and just poor Americans in general. So do you support Joe now because you disagreed with him then? It's actually very interesting to see that now you have to figure out, do I disagree with Joe Biden in the 1990s or do I disagree with him today? Because you've got to pick one because there's no, there's no in-between between that crime bill and his, bill, his, his policies now. There's not really an in-between. So, what, I mean, like... like you backed yourself into a, an intellectual corner because you decided that blue the guy that is blue colored is bad. Seriously? Okay, if that's the way you want to go, now tell me what part of Joe Biden's policy you disagree with on that. Good luck. Jesus. 373, thanks so much for the prime. He wants to end travel restrictions on countries which are hotbeds for terrorism. Good call. <sighs> Rising Phoenix, thanks for the tier two for 15 months. So, ending travel restrictions on t- countries that are hotbeds for terrorism. Did you know that we we can <laughs> we can allow people from countries that have hotbeds for terrorism into the country? We, like we can we can go. You know what? Uh, if you're from Egypt, you can come here. Um, because not every Muslim is a terrorist. In fact, uh, <laughs> shocker, the biggest threat, according to the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, and every other intelligence agency in the United States, which, of course, if you if you are patriotic and you believe in our military and our, in our intelligence individuals like a good American should, you should understand that they're in their best faith and they're going to do what they can to protect the country. Do you, do you support the troops, Mimsy? Of course you support the troops. Of course you support our, our, our famous members of the military. Of course, the brave men and women who protect us every day from terrorism um, all agree, without a doubt, 100%, the overwhelming terrorist threat to the United States is far right-wing extremism from within our own borders. Far right-wing extremism, white nationalists, Trump supporters, so now you have to choose again, Mimsy, because again, intellectual corner you backed yourself into. You have to choose whether or not you support 
the members of the military, the members of the intelligence community that keep us safe from terrorism, terrorists that you are scared of, of course, um, because 9-11 or something, um, terrorists that are big, big bad terrorists that um, these people uh, thwart all the time. By the way, the last terrorist uh, attacks that they thwarted, um, the FBI, the CIA, the military in general, um, the last the last uh, uh, terrorist attacks, do you know the last two terrorist attacks that they thwarted? Um, one was a far right-wing extremist group trying to kill and literally they said the word sodomize um, Joe Biden, um, and then another far-right extremist group that was going to uh, uh, abduct and murder the governor of Michigan, uh, Gretchen Whitmer, who was a Democrat. So it's very interesting to me that you that you support these people. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's not necessarily the best look, if I've got to say so. Uh, the Conqueror and Anonymous, thanks so much. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I suppose... I suppose uh, uh, do you support our intelligence community, the American patriots that, su that protect us from terrorists, like uh, the people that you support? Or do you support the terror? Okay, I guess we'll just let's keep going. This tax plan will raise taxes on the average American by $6,500 by 2030. The tax plan actually does not raise any average American's uh, uh, tax rate. Um, the average tax will increase because those that make over four hundred thousand dollars will pay more taxes. The average American, and this is this is the difference because of course you can't think. Um, average Americans is different than the average tax per American. Does that make sense? So you, you of all the taxes per capita. Um, Right now, 1% of the country pays 90% of the taxes. And to you, Mimsy, that might sound, wow, that's so much. But actually, they're, they're getting a 9% tax break. Because 99% of the wealth, the top 1% the top owns 99% of the wealth. Right? That's what the 1% is. Uh, they own 99% of the wealth, but only pay 90% of the taxes. It seems as though they, they need to get to that, that another 9%. Uh, of the taxes for that to be reasonable, you know what I'm saying. So the average tax may may rise uh, per capita, but the average person, you and I, uh, anyone that makes under four hundred thousand uh, dollars, in fact, will not see a tax increase because that's not how it works. Because the tax increase only affects people over four hundred thousand. To say that in any other way is is absolutely just. I mean, you're just wrong. I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to split it any other way. The taxes are not being raised on anyone that makes under four hundred thousand uh, dollars. There's nothing else I can say besides that because that's just what the tax plan is. Anyway, so uh... and raise taxes on wealthy Americans, which will move our jobs overseas. <sighs> Again, no, it won't because the reason that. <laughs> uh, Okay, first of all, we're not we're not making Nike shoes. We're not like we're not making iPhones already. Like all those things are already overseas. Okay, the reason that people move them overseas is because of labor costs, not because of taxes. Taxes don't disincentivize companies from working here because companies want to sell their goods to the American market. They will pay their taxes. They always pay their taxes when they can uh, or when they're forced to. Obviously, Amazon doesn't pay taxes, uh, which they should. They should absolutely pay taxes, and the workers there should make a cut from the profit. But instead of Jeff Bezos, again, hoarding... As a capitalist, I just don't understand how capitalists don't understand... That, that, like, the stagnation of money just sitting there pooling at the top is a bad thing for capitalism. What capitalism needs is for money to be rotating and changing hands. That's how capitalism works. What you do not want is stagnation at the top of the, of the totem pole, so to speak, where just a bunch of cash just sits there. Jeff Bezos can only spend so much money before he just can't, like, what's he had to spend it on? A person, even in the most lavish life that you could possibly think of, like, he can't possibly spend the money that he is making to, to recirculate that. That's not that, and, and, and nor, I mean, I'm not blaming him for that. He could try all he will. He just makes too much money. Uh, I, I don't know why you think it's a good thing that he, he hoards that money. There's no reason for him to have that money. The, the, as a capitalist, as a real capitalist, what you should want, what you should be advocating for, is billionaires should be should be having their their money cycled back into the economy so that everybody else can keep keep up. 
so everybody else can keep going. It doesn't have to go into your pocket. It can go into infrastructure. It can go into a lot of things. Tax money goes into a ton of things, including jobs programs that you're worried about. Like These things can be taken care of if only we dealt with capitalism as if it was 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 a, a thing that we need to curate and not something that operates by itself, which, of course, it is. It is a thing we need to curate because unfettered capitalism eats itself very quickly. And we know this because we regulate it so it doesn't do that. We don't regulate it enough. I, I, I just absolutely don't understand how, as a capitalist, you don't want healthy markets. Very strange to me. Uh, Tuna, Tunada, thanks for following. He's against charter schools and vouchers, which removes the parents' ability to choose what's right for their kids. Oh my God, again. Okay, so charter schools and vouchers, a big problem with charter schools and vouchers is the curriculum there can be can be forced upon um, because it's private, it's not public. Um, so you can have you can have private schools teach inaccuracy things. So so think about this. Um, the coastal elites that you don't like that voted for Joe Biden and are very, very socialist do in fact have schools that teach far left curriculums. Absolutely it happens. Um, there's more of, there's more of those than there are of the, the right wing variety. Um, although, uh, they do have religious schools as well to make up for those numbers. So, uh, alligator aid, thanks for following. Um, so, so the question is, do you want to allow a far left-wing curriculum to slowly take over the American um, um, uh, educational zeitgeist, I suppose? Um, I would assume you don't want that since you're making a puppet show and look, you, you look like this. On you, know, uh, you chose this as the way to fight that. Um, I would imagine that you don't want that. So charter schools are, as a person that went to school for education, uh, obviously this is me, not you, obviously. Um, I am an educated person that went to school to go educate other people. Um, I ended up putting on a corn suit instead and it's been pretty, pretty lucrative. Um, I definitely make more money than I would make if I was a teacher. So that's, that's nice. Um, uh, and also I don't have to deal with COVID or school shootings, which is dope. But, uh, <laughs> As someone who uh, cares very much about uh, schooling, um, what you need to do, what the ideal situation would be, is uh, uh, untie school funding from property taxes. That's pretty much the only thing we need to do. If you untie schools from property taxes and you just sort of like have the state budget in general just kind of swash through and make sure that all schools have a certain amount of money um, – You'd see education go up. So the thing is, um, if your if your ideas are right, they're going to stand up to rigor, right? So you shouldn't you shouldn't worry about who's being taught what. Um, you shouldn't worry about ah they're teaching evolution. If you're a religious person, you shouldn't be worried ah they're teaching LGBT uh, rights or sex education. You shouldn't worry about that. If your ideas are correct, and we're educating people to be to be independent thinkers, which is the point. We want we want we want children to be able to. Synthesize information because, again, because of these little little contraptions, we're having a lot of information uh, sprint through the universe, um, borderline unfettered, and uh, we need people to to be able to 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 you know understand and sift through this information. Um, that's that's the challenge for education moving forward, and you need people to be able to take that information, understand it, and then apply it in general. This is called um, um, like. Um, I took a, a just applied critical thinking colloquy stuff like that. Um, you need to, you, I mean, I could get into the the finer points of, of of how to teach people to do this stuff with learning modalities and, and all that stuff, but I'm not going to. What I, what, what the point is is you shouldn't be if you are if if you are sure that you are correct, um, like most right wingers say they're sure of. Uh, you should be very confident that a critical thinking individual um, would come out the other side of their education. And agree with right-wing talking points. But here's the rub. You know that isn't the case. You know that as more education uh, uh, hits someone, and, 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 and more often than not, an educated person tends to end up leaning left. This is for a myriad of reasons. But mostly, and this is very important, Mimsy, the number one reason that educated people move to the left is because left-wing belief is often correct. That's it. It's that simple. Now, a right-wing belief can be correct. I don't know of one. I'm sure there is one. 
Um, I don't know. I, I don't know what a right wing belief you have that uh, I'm sure I would agree with you at some point. But it's not in. But 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 <laughs> it's indoctrination, not learning. Um, you should be. You should be very 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 uh, uh, confident uh, in your arguments that uh, right wing right wing belief systems and and and, and the things that you talk about. Um, if they're correct, someone will na- you'll an educated person would naturally drift towards the correct choice. Not to be smug about it, but people tend to agree with me when they get a degree. I'm just tossing that out there. He wants to erode religious freedom by forcing business owners to act against their beliefs. Give me an example of Joe Biden advocating for Limiting the religious freedom of a of, of of a business. What? Can you actually give me an example of that? Joe Biden's a Catholic. I I don't know what you're talking about. Joe Biden. Joe Biden hasn't run against religious freedom. In fact, I don't think. I don't think you should be forced to to make a gay cake either. That's art. I do think you should be forced to sell a cake to someone that is gay, but you know, I'm fine with, I'm fine with restricting the cut type of art you're forced to do. That's fine. That was a specific, a very, very specific example. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. She wants businesses to be able to fire gay or trans people. They don't believe in those people. See, that's, that's worse. Um, are you talking about like Hobby Lobby and shit with the with the prophylactics and stuff? Like, I you you're you're being vague. I don't know that you actually know what you're talking about here. Um, he he, Joe Biden actually didn't run on any of that. He wants to appoint Beto to take away our guns. He wants to appoint Beto to take away your guns. What? DGCO, thanks for the 16 months. What? What? I don't. I don't know. No one's taking your guns. What? I. I don't know what the fuck is talking about. Beto's gonna take the the guns specifically. Has he brought up Beto? Mimsy, I don't give a fuck if you owned guns. Who are you arguing against? Why is my name in this? Like. Beto doesn't want, I don't, I don't give a shit, like, t- take the, he's not going to take your guns. In fact, if you talk to a leftist, minorities, LGBTQ people, get you a gun. I'm just saying. Get you a few guns, true. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bepis. He thinks America is a racist country? America is a racist country. Oh, my fucking God. Dude, it's not bad to admit that we live in a racist country, bro. That's how we address the problem. Why are you upset that someone says it's a racist country? What makes you upset about that? Why is that upsetting? When someone goes, America's racist country, you go, no, it's not. What's the benefit? When when there's when there's millions of people in this country that say, I regularly experience racism, what do you think a racist country is? Do you mean that the country has to specifically have legislation that, that works in opposition to black people or other minorities? Because guess what, sister? It does. It do- We do have stuff on the books that actively runs against the black communities. Gerrymandering is the number one thing that I can think of, not to mention the drug war. We literally have things on the books right now. The fucking, was it the 14th Amendment? Is it the 13th? Which one's the prison one? Why can't I remember all of a sudden? Let me pull out my Constitution of the United States of America real quick. Uh, 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 yeah, it's the 13th Amendment. Thank you. Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment of crime... Where the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist in the United States. So slavery is literally okay if you are if you are a criminal. Um, that type of shit right there. It literally is a loophole 
to uh, uh, allow black people to be put in prison. <sighs> if you don't think that we live in a racist country, then you should have no problem with us addressing racism. Because you'd be like, well, you're just wasting your time. Right? Okay. So when we talk about this, by the way, it's it's about it's about saying it's about saying, hey, uh, uh, when you see racist activity, like you say someone you see someone um, denigrating a black person in your school or something, and they're saying the N-word or something. Um, the idea is just to be like, hey, uh, I support you, person that experiences racism, person that is doing the racism. Here's why you shouldn't do that. Here's why it's hurtful, and here's why we should move forward and not allow that. That's it. What's the problem with addressing racist, racist actions? The racist country, when people say we have a racist country, not only do we mean that there's laws on the books that explicitly um, um, a target minority populations, and again, that's like not negotiable. It's a fact. Overwhelmingly, the like, like you can look at any statistics you want. Excuse me. Any statistics you'd like. Um, FBI statistics are a great place to go. Uh, uh, black individuals, specifically black individuals, um, have harsher sentencing for the same crimes. Uh, minimum sentencing is another thing um, where they, they boosted the rate of crack. Um, like, crack and cocaine have totally different uh, uh, totally different sentences, minimum-wise. Um, but crack is uh, pushed into the uh, black communities more. So guess who goes to prison more often for it? I'm just tossing that out there. So again, um, if you have a problem with the idea that the country is racist... I, I, I just don't understand what the what the goal is. If you just go, nah, uh and then a bunch of people go, yeah, I, I'm experiencing racism. Like, what's, is it just because you feel bad about it? Is it just like, ew, it's icky, racism bad. Why not be like, okay, so how do we fix it? If, a, if millions of people say that they are experiencing it, why do you get to be the arbiter of their experienced life? It doesn't make any sense for you to be like, no, you don't experience that. Like, why not just hear that person out and go, okay, so what do you think is a, what, what do you think is a racist experience? Oh, well, well, you know, white people come up and touch my hair without permission. That's a fuck it. That's racist. That happens. Ask, ask black people about their experiences. Literally sit down with black people and talk to them about their experiences just day to day. The, the, the little stuff that you hadn't considered that is incredibly racist. And then, I mean, it's not just, it's not just people saying the N word, but it literally happens all the time. So again, uh, it's just, it's just, you're absolutely, you're either in denial of the, the truth of our racist past history and, and present, or you just, you find it distasteful to call it racism. I don't know. He flip flops on what he stands for when it's politically convenient. He flip-flops for what he stands for when it's politically convenient. Okay, so here's the thing. If you take the time to make an argument from a political point of view at someone, okay, and you want them to change their mind, and then they do change their mind, and then you get mad at them for changing their mind, and then you still hold against them the bad opinion they used to have. What's the point of your advocacy? Like, genuinely, what's the point? Is it to hear yourself talk? Is it to make yourself feel better? Is it for virtue signaling points? Like, I don't, I don't actually understand. What's the point of your advocacy for whatever political belief you have if not to accept that someone might change their mind through good argument? Fableism, thanks for following. Handsome robot. Crowder and his ilk say this shit all the time. It's not racist country. It's a country with some racists in it. I mean, if that's your semantic argument, the problem is exactly the same, though. Right? The problem hasn't changed at all. You're just framing it differently, which I don't care. If you say it's a country with some racists in it, cool. Let's deal with that. We're, we're dealing with the same problem either way. I don't care how you frame it at all. Like, this is, this is literally just bumper sticker bullshit, Mimsy. This is bumper sticker bullshit. You're just saying words. Oh, he flip-flops. On what? Gay marriage? Okay, lots of people flip-flopped on that. Literally, Black Lives Matter had a flip-flop this year of most people. Her ramble was just a girl. Glenn, thanks for following. Like, this is the kind of stuff that you want. When you... <laughs> when you... When you... When you have... 
when you have advocacy for a belief and people flip to that side, that's effective and that's what you want. You want politicians to listen to you. He flip-flops. Oh, he hasn't remained rigid since... He's 78 years old. You want him to have... 58 years ago, he was 20 years old. You want that guy to have the same point of view for 58 straight years? Mimsy, are you actually fucking brain dead? I, I, I genuinely can't tell. Are you in good faith? The more she talks, the more the the more confident I am that she is not speaking in good faith whatsoever. I had some like like I thought there was a little bit of hope here that maybe she's a genuine person that is just like just has different beliefs. But the more she talks, the more it just sounds like a grift. Absolutely incredible. His party's idea of helping poor communities is to give them handouts and excuses. Oh my god. We're just gonna go through point by point. I'm not gonna do this whole video today. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna stop when she starts responding to me, and then that will be its own thing. We'll do that whole video too. So so don't be don't be discouraged because it's 50 minutes long. She's just talking about two separate things here. We're talking about policy issues right now, and then she's gonna respond to just me after this and i'll respond to that entire thing i don't care how long it takes we'll do the whole thing probably not tonight since it's 138 right now but thursday we'll be doing that'll be the first video i do is that whole thing so do not be discouraged we will we're getting your your mimsy in two parts here because it's just too much it might be three parts because it's so long i don't know we'll see what happens but um so you just said that uh joe biden's policy here and i guess the left in general to help Poor communities is for handouts. Okay, we're talking... We can get nuggies, sure. Um, what we're talking about is not... We are talking about systemic fixes to poverty and the symptoms of it, okay? People aren't saying, hey, I'm poor. And then, and then, and then a bunch of people sit around and go, what if we just give them a little money? That'll fix it. It's me, your friend Kevin, and La Fuberi. Uh, thank you both uh, for following. Um, <clears throat> this is not how it works, okay? What we are talking about, if you want to actually deal with with positive change and you want to actually deal with with the real beliefs of the left and how how things actually work, open your fucking ears and listen. Here it goes, Mimsy. Here's some steps on how to defeat poverty in the United States that isn't a handout. It's literally, it's quite literally personal responsibility without the gate without the, the the bars in front of it that make you pay money to get to that point right because the idea here is that like pull yourself up by your bootstraps sure but uh you still have to go do the work for it but there's a problem with that because there's a huge and you should know this as a person who doesn't make money um as an as a fellow as a fellow lower class individual um mimsy you should understand that the cost of things is quite high in regards to the the avenues you can take to better one's life. So here here are the things that you have to do to improve uh, uh, improve uh, the poverty in, in the United States. Um, and it's not it doesn't have anything to do with handouts. Uh, no one's going to see a a a paycheck in this scenario. Okay. Um, the first thing you need to do. The first thing you need to do starts at the base. I mentioned it before. But we're going to talk about it again. You have to disconnect how we fund schools from property taxes. How we fund schools right now are property taxes. So if you have a poor community, that school is automatically going to be poor because the houses aren't worth as much, so their property tax value is lower, which means the funding that you can possibly put into a school is objectively going to be lower than a place with high property taxes. And now there's a systemic issue in there as well because the poor communities tend to be minority communities due to redlining, due to uh, uh, gerrymandering, um, due to uh, the fact that in this, the Civil Rights uh, Act only passed in the 60s and b black individuals were denied home loans in neighborhoods other than where they live now um, for the most part. Now, that's why you see black parts of town. Did you ever think about that? Like the black part of town. The black, the black part of town exists because they were literally zoned into that space. Like legislatively, legally speaking, but systemically speaking, not because they chose to live there. 
it's 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 quite literally the same thing we did with Native Americans. So I mean, and you again, if you want to deny that, go for it. But before you say and open your fucking mouth, what I want you to do is go go actually like read the history of that and give me an act. Don't just say no. Actually, give me a fact that disagrees with what I just said there, because it is systemically and factually true and historically true. So you have to disconnect uh, property taxes from schools. That means your funding will go up, which means from a generational level, you'll get a better quality of education. Better quality of education in any place always leads to more opportunities from a, a, a college standpoint. So if their education goes up, you'll have more people that qualify for scholarships. You'll have more people that are equipped to go to school. And you'll have people with, with, with I mean, as a capitalist, Mimsy, you should want a highly educated workforce so that they can do their jobs better at more efficient rates to increase the en- and make the engine of capitalism go vroom even better, right? So that's number one, okay? Number two, poor communities almost always, okay, almost always have issues with crime. Why is that? It's almost like poverty causes you to do things outside of the law to survive. That's strange. And what is what is the number one thing? What is the number one thing people turn to to make money on in poor communities? Drugs. Know why? Two reasons. Two reasons. Number one, drugs are illegal. And so there's a market to be made by the people. You love free markets. There's a, there's a market to be made outside of the legal sphere where people, everyday people, can enter the market and sell goods and services that other people want. Right? Number two, drugs are really good at making you feel better. <laughs> and when you're poor and you got no upward mobility due to systemic issues, often systemic racism, like, yeah, you're going to look for a little bit of a feel good. Definitely. Especially because of healthcare, right? Lack of healthcare causes people to to uh, uh, seek pain management in other ways. I know for definitely for me, I smoke more weed than I would if I wasn't in pain every day. But my back is fucked from working at that fucking mail job. My ankle is fucked from being an athlete in high school. I live in I live in constant pain every day. I should probably apply for disability actually. But like um, you guys, I don't know. I feel bad about that because you guys propped me up. I don't even know if that would actually work because you guys uh, can pay my bills at this point. But. Um, uh, so, so, let's keep going. After that, after you're out of high school, now what? Free public education from a, from a, from a, from a, at least free community college. Now, this can get you an associate's degree, but also community colleges are where cops get their degrees. So you like cops, of course. Um, you could have, uh, better educated police officers, uh, because, of course, you support the Blue Lives big time. Um, you also can get, like, uh, uh, education for HVAC. You can get education. Um, you can get your certificate for lots of stuff at community colleges. You can also go through community colleges to do three three years at a community college. And then you do do, you do a three plus one. So there's, there's lots of places where you can get a four-year degree from a university. But three of those years you spend at the community college. Lots of programs do that to cut costs and to help poor people. This happens all the time. Um, just two year college would improve the, the, the ability of many people to have, um, um, job opportunities elsewhere. Okay. So now we've, uh, we've, we've done all that. What's another thing that people need? Another thing, that, another people, th- the thing that people need is food and water, man. People need that kind of shit. You also need housing. We could also afford stuff like that. It only take twenty billion dollars. Twenty billion dollars. That's not nuts. That's not much. That's not much at all. Twenty billion. Jeff Bezos could do that and still have five hundred billion dollars left or something like that. Um, and I'm not saying it's his specific responsibility, but again, the way that we operate, we could easily pull this off. $20 billion, we could take that out of our $1 trillion uh, uh, military budget if we wanted, um, and we'd still have $980 billion of military budget, and we wouldn't have any homeless people in America. The majority of homeless are uh, veterans of the United States. Of course, you support the military and you support the veterans, so you wouldn't want any veteran to go homeless now, would you? Um, and of course, since you support the military and support veterans, you are now for... 
universal um, um, shelter uh, uh, in America because you goddamn you love our troops and you're a patriot, goddamn it. So I mean, like all of these things can be fixed very, very quickly and easily, and it starts from a systemic level. And there's more things that we could fix that way. Had he was 28 months. I love your face. Um, there's, I mean, it's just uh, again, you haven't entertained any of these ideas. Um, because you just go, how are we going to pay for that? Well, I just told you how we could pay for it, but you know, um, you know, if you, if you want to, if you want to listen more again, you're invited, you're invited here. Um, and I could, I could, uh, easily, um, convert you over to my side because everything you say is going to be incredibly wrong. There's no, there's no f- reasonable rebuttal against anything that I've just said. Um, also, and then lastly, big one, healthcare, universal healthcare, a public option, um, a lot of the reason, again, if you are pro-capitalism, you want a healthy workforce. You don't want a workforce that has medical issues. You don't want a workforce that has chronic issues. You don't want a workforce that has addiction issues. You don't want a workforce that has communicable diseases. Um, you want a workforce that can um, operate at a, a healthy, efficient rate um, to keep, again, the engine of capitalism a churning. And if you don't have a workforce that can afford health care and a large portion of the workforce cannot afford health care, um, then, I mean, you're not going to get you're not gonna the most bang for your buck here. Um, we're only as healthy as the sickest person in the country. Um, and that's, I mean, that's kind of true. I mean, we're in a pandemic, as you can see. Um, we could easily control this if we had listened to the medical experts prior to that instead of the whiny baby that you voted for. Like, it's it, it's just so strange to me that, that instead of listening to experts on this kind of thing, you just, you just don't. You go, well, nah. Why, though? Like, what's the point? I really want to know, what qualifications do you have that allow you to disagree with medical experts? If you say freedom, you're absolutely fucking dumb. You have the freedom to choose correctly as well. Like, you're literally just using freedom as a scapegoat to make bad decisions. Like, you do have the freedom to make a bad decision, but why would you intentionally make the bad decision? Interesting. Keeping them obedient Democrat voters instead of trying to teach them that they're capable of so much more. Okay, so what do you think teaches someone that they're capable and have, like, opportunity in America, okay? Do you think, let, let's give you two scenarios, okay? Which person do you think will pull themselves up by their bootstraps? Which person do you think has incentive to work harder, okay? This is interesting. Which person do you think has incentive to work harder? Which person do you think will be rewarded for their hard work more or less? Okay, so in situation one, you have a poor minority gay per- a trans person. Let's say you have a you have a, a a a black gay man or a black trans man. Let's say black trans man. <coughs> trans men get deleted too much. So we'll say black trans man. Um, you have a black trans man from a poor community whose education who who's had to, was forced to drop out of school because the school nearby uh, the school in their network was uh, shut down due to lack of funding and uh, his parents didn't have uh, the money or the time to drive them to the school, uh, uh, the next nearest school where the buses don't come to to their house, right? So they have no transportation to a school. So they didn't finish high school of no, no fault of their own. They were doing fine in school. But the parents don't have the resources to take that child to school. This happens all the time. There's a there's a there's a community uh, not far from here named Buena uh, Buena Buena Vista, uh, Buena Vista Buena Vista. Um, the 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 school shut down over here, um, and it's a black community, um, and uh, it just wiped out the education of like two generations of kids um, because a lot of those parents don't make a lot of money. They can't afford to drive their kids to school, and they certainly can't afford to go. You know. Uh, uh, s- stopping their job and going to pick up their kids at 3 p.m. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, I mean, just a lot of kids ended up having to drop out, being forced to drop out. Uh, would you say that that person uh, has more uh, uh, upper mobility, okay, bootstraps? Like, and this isn't, you know, this happens in reality right now. This is our current system. Um, or, same scenario, uh, 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 a black trans man, Okay, uh, or a black trans kid um, um, who is who is a boy. Um, uh, uh, the school doesn't shut down because it's not tied to the property taxes 
of his poor community. And he manages to graduate um, reasonably from that school. Okay? After he manages that, um, he is able to, as a trans individual, get health care. Um, so the health care includes mental health care, uh, which means that the transition that, uh, that he goes through uh, is, is a healthy one. Um, you make sure that the dysphoria is limited. You can make sure that the, uh, that the mental health care services are there, the counseling is there, and the procedure is safe uh, for any procedures that may happen, whether it's top surgery, bottom surgery, uh, whatever going on. Um, no no out of cost uh, there so that the person can live their life fully um, in their realized, actual, um, um, healthy body that doesn't cause them dysphoria. Um, after they graduate from, from, from high school because it wasn't shut down, even though they had no transportation, luckily the public buses could still, could still, uh, push them there. Um, they had access to a uh, community college shortly after that. Um, and all the while, and I didn't mention this the first time because I didn't want to be a real big bummer, but, um, by this time, uh, once he gets into college, turns out dad ends up having, uh, 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 uh um, let's say, prostate cancer um a common cancer and a treatable cancer but also an expensive cancer um and so in this scenario uh we go back to we go back to the other one um now he as a high school dropout gets a job for minimum wage because he doesn't qualify anywhere else um uh, works really hard becomes a manager at a fast food restaurant making 11 bucks an hour roughly works works his ass off gets overtime i this is is, i i I did this as well works overtime um just so that he can help mitigate some of the costs of the of the bills on his dad uh who in this scenario chose not to get treatment but still can't work due the due to the problem that uh prostate cancer causes eventually um so sorry dad uh, but in this scenario, dad has access to free health care. Uh, our, our, our individual doesn't have to uh, leave school, can continue their education, doesn't have to get another job because uh, things like food and water and shelter are already provided for um, if they're needed 100%. Um, and frankly, can move out at that point if uh, the home life isn't necessarily good. Could be that the dad, even though he has prostate cancer, maybe he's kind of a dick because his kid is a trans man. Who knows? And so now that person has access to shelter in a safe place um, and, 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 again, can have access to health care. So, again, like which person has more freedom here? Like which person has more freedom How can you possibly pick the one under this system that we have today? It just doesn't make any sense. I, I and if you do pick that person, I I don't know what like why why? I would love to know why. And he's said and done way more racist stuff than Trump ever has, but he Uh, that one's not true. But even if he, even if he did, even if he, even if, if <laughs> even if he did say more racist stuff uh, in the past, again, he is, um, <laughs> and he hasn't. He hasn't. That's a fact. Uh, uh, sorry, I got a cramp in my neck. Um, <laughs> my body just cringed into oblivion uh, when when she said that out loud like a dum dum. Um, uh, he hasn't said more racist stuff than Trump. Um, but even if he did, uh, he is 78 years old and the things he said in youth are no longer being said today while Donald Trump continues to do that as a 76 year old man. So, I mean, like, he's never had to answer for it. So what are you talking about? Do you think the left just lets him say racist shit and we don't talk about it? What do you, what do you, what? To sum it up, in my opinion, He's a liar, a grifter, a plagiarizer, a creepy kid sniffer. A plagiarizer? A corrupt, swampy career politician who's controlled by the radical left, who wants to tear down our country's institutions like capitalism. I don't want to tear down capitalism. I want to phase out of it. Constitution and our Bill of Rights. And this is not because they care about us, but because they want power over us. And if it hadn't been for COVID and the Democrat-run biased media, Trump would have won a landslide. 
If it wasn't for all the votes that he didn't get, he would have won. True. I I do agree, Mimsy. If 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 the election had been totally different, Donald Trump would have won. But he but he didn't win. He lost. He lost by six million votes, and he's going to lose uh, a three hundred six to two thirty two uh, electoral vote. Uh, so I I just I just I, I, I he lost. If everything was different, it would be different. Yeah, okay, I guess so. I I suppose so. Nancy, that's enough. You sound like a crazy person. I'm seriously worried about your mental health. Well, I I I rebutted everything, right? Did I did I did I roundly rebut everything you just said there? I'm not even going to dignify any of your nonsense with a response. I dignified it all with a response, long responses. We're just going to move on to the next segment now. Okay, what's the next segment? Is it me? Wait, I don't want to leave it like this. Please, my host. I promise I'm done with my rant. But before we move on, allow me to say something else to our friends. Ugh, go ahead, but make it fast. You're running out my clock. Okay, I'll try to make it brief. What I've said here are my beliefs. They aren't unfounded and many millions- They are unfounded. Lucanator, Luke, thanks for following. They are actually literally unfounded. Um, yeah. Like, literally unfounded. Millions of Americans share these beliefs. Okay, millions of Americans also share the belief that God exists. Millions, billions of people share the belief that, that Vishnu exists. Like, what? There's a billion, there are billions of people that think that, that someone like you, that's bisexual, should be thrown off a roof and murdered. So, are we going with popular vote here, or are we going to go with what... What we could suss out after biases leave the room, and we just follow the facts. Like, w like what? Literally, find me. I I asked you multiple times, and I know you're gonna watch this video. I asked you multiple times for examples and ways to show your beliefs to be true. Okay. Now, I don't believe that you can do that. I would love for you to source your info. I have my suspicions that you might not do so. But there is another side, a side that is more likely... It doesn't matter if she's Christian or not, it still stands. A, 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 the majority of Americans believe that, Christ, that that Jesus exists. So she's she's just... It's just an argument from popularity, and it's, it's, it's not true. In fact, if we're going from an argument of popularity... I mean... There it is right there. Argument from popularity. Do you really want to go down that road? There's the argument from popularity, Mimsy. Millions of people believe. Okay, it's unfounded then. Because your 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 argument was a bunch of people believe this. Well, it looks like a bunch of people don't believe it. More people, in fact, don't believe it. And because we vote on facts, you lose. So which way do you want to go? Do you want to go with facts are sussed out over time based on actual reality? Or do you want to go with facts are how many people believe a thing? Because either way, you lose. Isn't that wild? Isn't it weird how your belief system doesn't handle... Handle scrutiny very well? Fucking strange. Holy shit. You agree with Piper's opinions. They are our brothers and sisters. We believe our side is right, but they believe just as strongly that their side is right. No, I don't believe my side is right. I know I'm right. It's very different. Anyone on the left with some political knowledge could argue and debunk every one of my talking points. And it, You couldn't debunk any of my talking points, though. That's the point. Like... Be, I can debunk all of yours, or most of them, and you can't debunk any of mine. Like, literally, you can't. Isn't that wild? It's fucking weird. <laughs> just, just absolutely strange. Someone on the right with some political knowledge could debunk Piper's talking points. No. So who's right? Well, yes, because Piper is a straw man. No. Well, my side's right. Just kidding. It could be both, or neither, or somewhere in between. Or it literally can't be both. It literally cannot be both. It's only one, and it is me. I am correct. Like, <laughs> or Maybe there is no truth, only perception. But it doesn't mean that one side is evil. There are- Okay, one side, one side doesn't have to be evil. One side is clearly unethical, and it's your side. Thought Piper was supposed to be the host this episode. Nope. 
good and bad people and informed and misinformed people on both sides. And different people can process, process the same information in very different ways. I disagree that you're processing the information. It really comes down to what rings true with you. We're all entitled to our own opinions because we're all in different places in our own unique paths through our lives. <sighs> this is just fucking... This is... This is bumper sticker nonsense, bro! This is not... <laughs> Reasonable adults are... You're just doing feels over real... Yes, thank you, Nervous Spriggan. Like, it's literally just... Just... Well, I guess if we fusey wheels our way through it... No, you literally deny reality! You literally denied that Joe Biden won the election, bro! You denied this! You deny counting. If I can't rely on you to understand how counting works, forgive me if I don't rely on you to understand systemic racism. We're here to learn our own lessons and to progress our own souls through our individual experiences. So in spite of what my feelings are about Joe Biden possibly being our next president, not possibly. This came out 14 hours ago. Not possibly. It's not a possibility. It's a guarantee. He won the election in America. He is the president-elect. He will be sworn in in January. Donald Trump lost. This is... This is... It's not... It's This is not a, a debate... This way of thinking is more common than you might think. Screet Mofa, how long have you been here? Following since October? Okay, you get a little bit of a pass. You get a little bit of a pass for thinking that that I would be confused or 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 unaware that this is a common thought among idiots on the right. You haven't been here long enough. <laughs> My entire career is this, okay? I decided to adopt a position of cautious optimism. Of course, I'm not happy about it, but having a negative attitude isn't going to help me or anyone else. I'm a strong believer in the principles of the law of attraction and the power of positive thinking. Oh, my fucking God. Mm, she read the secret once. No! No! <laughs> Surprise, woo-woo. I know that my life is what I make it. If I dwell on negative things, those things will be attracted into my life. I know for a fact you consider me a negative thing. And yet here I am. Hmm. Hmm. Very strange. How long do you think this grift will go on? I think she quits before 2022. I don't think, I, I feel like at some point she's just going to stop. What do you think? There are no foregone conclusions here. Anything can and will happen. No. Donald Trump lost. Not anything can happen. I see this as a learning experience, and not just for me, but for everyone. Things always happen the way that they were supposed to, even if we don't see it right now. Things always happen the way they're supposed to, even if we don't see it right now. <laughs> God gives his biggest battles to his greatest warriors, after all. <sighs> I thought you said she wasn't a Christian, chat. What, what was that shit? What was that shit I just heard? Is she just spiritual? Does she believe in the risen Christ? Does she have Jesus in her heart? If she believes in Jesus as well, then she's a fucking Christian, bro. You lied to me. Wow! How many bumper stickers did you have to read to come up with that monologue? Exactly. That was, like, really bullshit. I can't... It's so weird how she, she dips into self-awareness. Hyper. Well, I'm feeling a lot better now, so what was this other segment you were talking about? Oh, yeah. One of my friends sent me a link. Some guy that goes by actual Jake. 
did another reaction video on your show. Yes, I did. And that's where we're going to leave this episode because I had to I had to do this the whole time. So I'm not going to we, – we've we gone five hours. It's 2 a.m. Um, there's no fucking way I'm doing the rest of this. There's 40 more minutes of it. There's 40 more minutes of it. Um, so um, we are going to end that uh, uh, right now. Thanks, Tom, for the five months. I finally got to where I could pay for my monthly sub. I'll never be cornless again. Hell yeah, Tom. Congrats. Um, oh, boy. I just knocked over my Pepsi. My Bepis. There it is. It's all fine now. Uh, so, um, <sighs> so that was Mimsy Moon. Uh, this is not... She's just so fucking bad at stuff, man. I, I don't think she has... I don't think she has any education on any of this. Uh, shocker. Um, I also don't think she's necessarily in good faith, which is actually disappointing to me. Um, um, I'm going to, like, Mr. Rogers this. And so, chat, at the end of this stream, what I want you to take away from this here, uh, or, or video if you're watching on YouTube, what I want you to take away from this is I look exactly like a surf or a peasant, if peasants were corn. Um, I, I look exactly like a little head thing, a little bonnet, and a little chin strappy. And I even got this fucking thing going on. I look just, I look like I, 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 I look like I farm turnips right now. Um, which is very interesting as a corn. Um, what I, what I, what I want for all of you, okay? Um, what I want for each and every one of you is, uh, to smash that corn button, Okay? I want you to follow. I want you to subscribe, okay? Make sure you smash that corn button. Make sure you give a like, okay? If you can. Make sure you you, you, you come on by a live stream if you're not here already. Or or you, or you, or you drop by and let, let the other corns know, hey, you're valid, okay? Because even though people like Mimsy exist, um, people people that are just like like real, 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 real big dum-dums, you know? Real sad. Uh, they don't believe that the world can get better and that you should have <laughs> better things. I don't know. Um, uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do it anyway. We're gonna do it anyway. And in spite of all their bitching, we're gonna get you guys health care. We're gonna get you guys education. <sighs> we're gonna get you guys uh, legal weed. We're gonna get you guys all sorts of good stuff. It's gonna be fucking dope. Okay.